things were quite different two to three hundred million years ago here on the border between Switzerland and Italy. Two to three hundred million years ago. What could the world have looked like back then? Before the Alps were formed, there was a sea here with reefs, lagoons and deep basins. Monte San Giorgio towers up 1,096 meters. It consists of different rock strata, one above the other. They conceal the petrified remains of plants and animals that lived in the sea which once existed here, silent witnesses to life so long ago. Amongst other things, stone has always been seen as a symbol of immovability and solidity, of tranquility and time. But legend has it that man can also issue forth from stone. The oldest documents testifying to the use of rock hewn from Monte San Giorgio date back to the 16th century. But stone was probably quarried from the mountain long before that. Marble. This reddish marmo di arzo has always been a luxurious building material for floors, staircases, columns, balustrades and altars. This is also stone from which sculptures are created. Thus, in the hands of the sculptor, human form truly can issue forth from stone. The limestone of Monte San Giorgio formed from deposits of ultrafine mud on the seabed. The strata were created by motion in the sea, by currents and by changes in the depth of the water. More than 20 meters high, the walls of the Valmara Gorge were formed by limestone deposits over a period of more than 200,000 years. One meter of rock represents the deposits of 10,000 years. Ten centimeters correspond to 1,000 years. And a narrow layer, only one centimeter deep, is the result of limestone deposits over a hundred years.
most of the fossilized creatures of Monte San Giorgio were marine saurians, which lived in the Middle Triassic period, between 230 and 245 million years ago. The dead animals that sank to the seabed were covered by a layer of mud, a toxic, sulfurous mass which preserved them. Otherwise, their cadavers would have soon been gnawed at and devoured by scavengers. As it is, though, the skeletons are in a good state of preservation. The abundance and diversity of the fossilized remains on Monte San Giorgio is unique worldwide. Reptiles, fish, bivalves, ammonites sea urchins, crustaceans, and plants. In 1919, Zurich zoologist Bernhard Peyer took an interest in the fossils of Monte San Giorgio. Under his direction, the University of Zurich carried out systematic excavation work. The celebrated collection at Zurich University was established with finds collected by Paya. Through him, Monte San Giorgio became known as the Mountain of the Marine Fossils. It's known that the mountain still holds secrets about our primeval history and will do so perhaps forever. Down the ages, the quiet beauty of the mountain and the vastness of the region around it has also drawn people to establish hermitages here. For hermits, this is a place to find strength, to meditate and to pray. In the form of a joint World Heritage Site, 15 towns and villages in Ticino and Lombardy plan to present the sites where fossils are found, the landscape and its nature, and the quarries and the museums beyond the national borders of Switzerland and Italy. The countryside around Monte San Giorgio is a nature preserve, 25 square kilometers in area. Only scientists are permitted to search for fossils. Any finds belong to the state. The abundance of fossils on Monte San Giorgio is world famous. But the potential of the site has by no means been exhausted. The work of archaeologist Heinz Fugger from the University of Zurich is carried out in close coordination with the University of Milan and the Museum of Natural History in Lugano. Even in the 18th century, scientists still believed that fossils were the remains of creatures that had died in the flood. They looked specifically for human beings who had perished in the deluge, as is documented in the Bible in the book of Genesis.
Modern-day excavation work in search of fossils that are more than 200 million years old can reveal new information. The latest finds can fill the gap in our knowledge of the way in which life on Earth developed. It was only a few years ago that the first tiny creatures were found. Insects only a few centimetres or indeed millimetres in size. These are important new discoveries for research. According to Heinz Fuhrer, the prime aim of new excavation work is not to find spectacular skeletons, but to make a precise study of the rock strata in order to gain an impression of the landscape and of the animals and plants that lived in prehistoric times. How did creatures relate to their environment back then and to one another? What did that environment look like? What kind of symbioses existed? What sources of food did creatures have? Questions that reach far back into the Earth's history to a time long before man appeared. The old question of creation repeatedly crops up. What is the true secret of our origins? Can the mountain provide an answer? Which of our concepts would need correcting if we knew everything? Where do we humans stand? After all, our development began only two and a half million years ago. The concept of time is also always a concept of a beginning and an end. Up to 300 million years old are these fossilized witnesses to the history of the Earth proof of the immortality or the transience of life? Are they proof of the infinite or the finite nature of our life today as human beings and of life after us? <laughs> 